a very welcome to one and all to the people signatures and uh, we you are induced into the end a warm welcome to one and all to the people signatures so we are moving on to module 1 in which there is a poem which is uh, when i was growing up Penned by Nelly Wang. She is a poet and activist, was born in Oakland in California. She is uh, the daughter of a Chinese immigrant and in her poetry and through her community activism, she confronts social problems such as racism, sexism and labor issues. member of various literary, artistic and political groups including Radical Women, the Freedom Socialist Party and the National Asian American Telecommunications Association. And in the year 1989, she received a Women of Words Award from the San Francisco Women Foundations. And, uh, it is something she is a renowned revolutionary feminist poet and activist who has strived to address social causes. Her parents were Chinese immigrants. At a very early age, she started working in a restaurant begun by her parents. After having graduated from Oakland High School, she worked as a secretary for Bethlehem Steel Corporation for several years. Later, she studied creative writing at San Francisco State University. During the Second World War, when Japan bombed America's naval base Pearl Harbor, Nelly Wang was a child. So, this particular poem, When I Was Growing Up, is an autobiographical poem written by this lady who was a revolutionary feminist activist, Nelly Wang. And in this poem also, she reflects on the universal representation of Western ideals of beauty advertised in American popular culture, from which Wang expresses her desire to be white, to be normal. She states, in the poem that to become a woman, a desirable woman, I began to wear imaginary pale skin. And the lack of and negative stereotypical representation of Asian American women in Western popular culture denied Nelly Wong the agency to privilege her intersectional identity. So in the poem, when I was growing up, she relates the struggle of a Chinese girl growing up searching to find her voice in a predominantly white cultural majority. So this is the occasion in which the poem is written. And in the Second World War period, Japanese Americans were evacuated to concentration camps since Japan bombed America's naval base at Pearl Harbor. It had a fearful and painful impact on Wong's family because they were considered as Japanese, where they were actually Chinese Americans. And we shall see the collection of works by Wang. She has published and uh, she was published her first book of poetry, Dreams in Harrison Railroad Park in 1977. Wang's anthology of poetry includes the death of uh, a long steam lady that is in 1986, Stalin moments in 1997 and breakfast dinner lunch in 2012.
ഇതാണ് ദിസ് ലേഡി ഷീസ് ദാറ്റ് ഓഫ് ചാൻ ഇസ് അമേരിക്കൻ റൈറ്റർ ആൻഡ് ഷീ ഇസ് സം വൺ ഹൂസ് ബെസ്റ്റ് നോൺ ഫോർ ഹർ themes of feminism and identity so i have already told you this poem is autobiographical and at the same time it represents the plight of all women immigrants in america it uh, talks about uh, her past and her journey from childhood to adolescence with each passing stanza there is a progression of time attitude and outlook okay we shall see uh, the poem in detail so this is the opening stanza i know now that once i longed to be white how you ask let me tell you the ways when i was growing up people told me i was dark and i believed my own darkness in the mirror in my soul my own narrow vision so this poem uh, that is opens with the thoughts of a young girl who wishes to disown her identity and culture and she is someone who tries to fit into the dominant white majority so uh, here she is talking like that i wanted to be one once okay it's not that i'm now so this that is when i am growing up people told me i was dark and i believed my own darkness in the mirror and again she tell us when i was growing up it is my sisters with fair skin god praised for the beauty and i fell further crushed between high walls when i was growing up my sisters with fair skin got praise for the beauty and i fell further crushed between high walls when i was growing up i read magazines and saw movies blonde movie stars white skin sensuous lips and to be elevated to become a woman a desirable woman I began to wear imaginary pale skin. So it is here she is uh, talk about the discrimination that uh, she faced because of her appearance and color and she is someone she expresses her desire to be like the fair blonde sensuous desirable american woman. Okay so this is something the discrimination was so evident that she started believing in her her own darkness and there she began wearing imaginary pale skin and she has found that her sisters the she calls the white american ladies as her sisters and they all having the fair skin they are praising for the beauty and she is crushed uh, from the high walls to the lower floor and she is someone who read magazines and uh, saw movies were only fairness is elevated and fair people are become the movie stars the white skin and the sensuous lips are elevated to be the structure of uh, uh, the epitome of uh, beauty and uh, and she wanted to become a lady a uh, lady of desire a uh, lady were all men desires and she, for that she began to wear imaginary pale skin and then again she tells us that when uh, i was growing up i was proud of my english my grammar my spelling fitting into the group of uh, smart children smart chinese children fitting and belonging getting in line and when i was growing up and went to high school i discovered the rich white girls a few ye- yellow girls their imported cotton dresses their kashmiri sweaters their curly hair and i thought that i too should have what these lucky girls had so this is uh, 
uh, it is something the discrimination that is so evident okay she says that in spite of having a good command over the american language and american lifestyle she was still an un-american she recollects the memory of being selected by white man with happiness she says that made her feel special and precious she started believing that she represents the eastern beauty and it is uh, she, she is having all the uh, all the qualities an american lady she is possessing she know the language hmm? and uh, she she went to high school she discovered uh, there are rich white girls though uh, there are fa- few yellow girls like her and uh, the curly hair are the she thought that she too should have what these lucky girls had because she is something that she represents a kind of a beauty too and then again she says when i was growing up i hungered american food american lifestyles coded white and even to me a child born of chinese parents being chinese was feeling foreign was limiting was an american so that was she says here like she says in spite of having all the qualities that they are possessing like her she was still an an american and she is something she recollected uh, the, the when i was growing up and white men wanted to take me out i thought it was special an exotic gardenia and anxious to fit the stereotype of an oriental chick so here we we had a uh, reference like um, oriental so oriental which is a term referring to asian people so the term is regarded as offensive by asians especially by asian american that's what she is uh, taking it out and there is a particular word which is oriental chick that's an asian a female uh, because of a girl with asian proportions of beauty so there are a reference like yellow yellow color is also so people having a yellowish skin regarded as an offensive term for asians to again and uh, there is a repetition of yellow color in the poem so that is something that is uh, something which uh, make uh, which is telling uh, like uh, that of discrimination that uh, the americans had for uh, the asians and then again she says when i was growing up i felt ashamed of some yellow man their small bones the frail bodies they are spitting on the streets they coughing they are lying in sandler's rooms shooting themselves in the arms so here uh, she compares her own people that is chinese man in particular and man from the east in general to the white man and it's like she feels that the former is inferior which means the her own men are inferior to the later in all aspect she says uh, that she is ashamed of her people for the uncultured ways and habits for that she says the uncultured ways like they are having a small bones they are having frail bodies they are spitting on the streets they are coughing they are lying on the sunless rooms and shooting themselves in the arms okay uh, that is something she is uh, she says on about her own people it's because she is ashamed of her own people uh, and she says they are uncultured uh, for their habits and uh, she again say uh, says when i was growing up people would ask if i were filipino a palencian portuguese they named all colors except white the shell of my soul but not my rough dark skin and here uh, again she says she then moves on to talk about the insensitivity of people who take her identity for granted they call her portuguese polynesian philippine without the slightest concern for her feelings and uh, this is uh, um, uh, her feelings uh, then again she says uh, when i was uh, growing up 
I felt ashamed of uh, some yellow man. So that is what she said. And uh, uh, again, she says, when I was growing up, I felt dirty. I thought that God made white people clean. Okay, and no matter how much I bathed, I could not change. I could not shed my skin. That is in the grey water. Okay, so this is something very uh, interesting to read. So, uh, so this is something. All these led to a major shift in that poet's attitude and tone. And she says, "There is a Malayalam proverb like 'Ka kul chal ko kavila varnula.' Probably that. So uh, she thought that it is God who made all these differences. He he made all the divisions, the discriminations. The and uh, there is not uh, even have an equality in uh, his creation of people. That God made white people clean, so they are clean. No matter how much I bathed, she says she could not change. I could not shed my skin in the grey water. So again. um uh, she, uh, uh, in the, the other line she has used a term like ghetto and all so ghetto is an area in a city especially we are uh, like a slum area where um, uh, people of a particular race or religion live closely together and filipino uh, the, there is a particular reference to that uh, filipino uh, filipino is a um, uh, native inhabitant of philippines that you know polynesian there is a term like the indigenous people who inhabits the islands of polynesia and um, um, so uh, here again uh, it is uh, said like uh, uh, when i was uh, growing up uh, i swore Uh, i would run away to purple mountains uh, houses by the sea with nothing over my head with space to breathe uncongested with the yellow people in an area called china town in an area i later learned was a ghetto one of many hearts of asian american so here we are getting a reference to a particular area of a city outside china where many chinese people live and there are lots of chinese restaurants and shops so she, from the she wanted to escape to a an area so um uh, that is a space she want to breathe she wanted to get away from the yellow people in that particular area in the china town so uh, and then again it is a china town where she regarded as a ghetto a ghetto is an um, a slum area a particular race or religion uh, live closely uh, from the other they are separated there is a, a system of apartheid apartheid system there and um, Uh, so in the final stanza we are getting like um, uh, she, uh, it's the uh, uh, she wanted to get rid of her asian american identity to american identity so in the final stanza uh, there we have a shift a major shift in the poet's attitude she understands that however uh, hard she may try she is always the other the other in courts so for the whites so i know now that once i long to be white how many more ways you ask haven't i told you enough this is it she accepts her ethnic identity and breaks the american stereotype of beauty she yearns to run to her homeland where she can breathe freely and be her own self so that is something uh, she has realized and uh, of her own identity so uh so here in this poem he uh, she began begins the poem with i know now that once i long to be white the particular line itself uh, uh she uh, uh, the poet wants to be um, run away from the privilege she attributes to be a, a member of a cultural majority okay uh, earlier she was ashamed of her darker asian skin and chinese culture and here uh, she uh, she laments like i could not change uh, i could not shed my skin 
okay i could not change and i could not shed my skin and so this is a poem uh, details the feelings of the speaker as she was growing up in america while simultaneously being immersed in chinese culture she wanted to be part of the american cul- white culture as it was depicted and glamorized by media and movies and then again she addressed the issues such as feminism immigration identity through uh, her poems and uh, she was also involved with uh, women writers union on campus organizing programs on issues of race sex and class she had a great adherence to asian american culture and her literary uh, discourses discussed this identity issues at length so uh, uh nelivang the poet uh, we can see the themes like feminism kaanan betum immigration oru bhagathu nikkam so their own homeland aayirikkum pakshe aa homeland il pa namukku kore instances nammal kandittundalle sondam naatil nikkan pattada veru naatile koodi pona kore instances nammal ipo recently kore media il kodi ningal kandittundayirikkum and identity uh, crisis avarku oru naatile or identity illathalla avaru feelings ekke kandittundayirikkum so that is very relevant topic uh, in today's uh, uh, days also so Uh, she was a person who was also involved with women writers union mm? and uh, she uh, she organized lot of programs uh, on issues of racism uh, sexual sexism and class issues and all so namku ippolthe or avasthile we can very much related to all this i uh, have cultural difference um religious uh, religion difference um class difference um alla undavan povuna i have identity issues at length so um uh, she is a person who Who, who she wrote from her own personal identity uh, she wrote for uh, her life as the theme um, her family history and she is a person who decla- declared her feminist to socialist perspective in her writing and there is a instance she wrote where the more i see some people fighting back so she wanted not to be silent anymore uh, she wanted to people to react a fight back the more i see everyone acquire in the strength to fight back and uh, she delivered a series of lectures in uh, radical women's conferences like uh, there are lot many conferences she has organized like women and revolution alive and inseparable and though she reflected her feminist ideologies though she considered the freedom of women as necessary as a breath okay uh, in her preachers she reminds uh, the whole world that the uh, her the, the that is something personal is political too and she was an advocate of revolutionary feminism and uh, she is a person she has also believed that women are not a mere victim on earth instead they should fly with what colors fly with colors so again uh, this is a poem which is an autobiographical poem which was published in the year 1973 so in this poem she emphasizes on the identity crisis experienced by the asian americans and it depicts the history of the poet itself and the, her own family so uh, the poem is composed in past tense when you look in prop uh, very deep into the poem uh, this poem is composed in past tense so uh, at the outset of the poem she describes her desperation in a society that celebrates what white beauty when she grew up she realized that it was white people who appeared in movies and magazines and the world elevated as the so called desirable women and signifies that how the popular culture in america has cultivated these ideas of beauty by creating a wrong notion of being white the poet herself imagined as white and started to wear pale skin okay and then uh, again in the next stanzas she, uh, she narrates how she was trying to be adapted to the western language and culture she tried a lot to change her skin change her ways everything 
and she met white girls who were imported cotton dresses and told that she too should have these fortunes and uh, again in the poem we can very well trace that uh, she grew up she longed for the american food and style she uh, she uh, there she has used the word hungered so uh, the word hungered which is something that shows the intensity of her desire to imitate the american uh, lifestyle uh, she began to hate yellow men and felt ashamed of being with them and their acts were considered as cultureless the tea that made her skin dark her skin that is the dark skin she is telling us was dirty and tried to wash it away she says i could not shed my skin in the gray water she swore she would run away to somewhere unoccupied with the yellow people one concludes this poem with a note of self realization about her identity she reconciles herself with her chinese american identity thereby dismantling the stereotype of western beauty cult so this is uh, the poem is all about uh, that of uh, uh, this lady uh, who has written all this uh, uh, things like um, uh, when i was growing up so this is this particular poem uh, is uh, a frequently anthologized poems in educational curricula so this autobiographical poem um highlights that nitty crisis experienced by asian americans so uh, this is a gun um, where uh, she uh, you depicts uh, the past of the poet her her, uh, her early childhood and adolescence so uh, she is an asian american china is born of chinese parents and she is someone forced to incorporate the dominant white culture and she disowned that of her own owing to her fear of being discriminated so she is in a white culture alvarin society that is something that meshed her with all its privileges and um, so this is her Uh, she, uh, later she reconciles herself with her chinese american identity uh, she dismantles all, uh, all the stereotypes of the western beauty cult so he, uh, here in this poem uh, that is um, uh, it's very uh, there is a very little usage of capitalism in the poem so that uh, is uh, there are lot many questions uh, to uh, she is asking us so there are repetition repetitive lines that also she has used here so this is uh, all about a uh, poem so uh, uh, i am ending with a quote by her like a lot of my poems come from the workplace that is where i have experienced a great deal of sexism and racism which is continuing again and again okay so this is a poem by nelly wong when i was growing up thank you